to search for an item and visiting visiting another retail outlet in the hope of getting a different color a better price or size the early adopters of more online e-commerce had taken to ordering goods online but many were wary of sharing their payment details with a digital push by the indian government over the past three years cheaper data prices driven by geo and by the other telcos proliferation of smartphones explosion in uh, explosion in secure online payment options the lockdowns recently and stay at home orders thanks to the pandemic indians have leapt on to the online shopping experience that users account for more than 42% and 20 there are 100 100 million online e-shoppers that number will more than treble to 350 million by 2025 or it could happen even earlier going by the way digital has been moving gross merchandise value is expected to quadruple by 2025 from 30 billion to 120 billion dollars plus online reach retail has also reached out to 95% codes small towns and tier 2 india today account for 50% of all shoppers and 3 out of 5 orders come from there according to the flipkart and bain and company report please excuse me for quoting them but this is what i could find mobile phones and electronics account for a bulk of the transactions but the kinds of goods being shopped for is ever growing fashion beauty lifestyle spectacles uh, glasses daily groceries food cars insurance ticketing furniture and whatever you almost everything's being bought online indians are going online more than ever before the e-commerce platforms are also burgeoning service niche segments as well competition and a finicky cons- consumer is forcing platforms to innovate and deliver an experience as close to the real world as possible for platforms the consumer is becoming king queen prince princess and everything else a differentiated easy to use experience it's easy to use and wow experience is what online shoppers are seeking how do you wow them it, the, the consumer who's who wants to be delighted ever more how do you make life for them easy these and other questions will be answered by a fabulous expert panel we have curated for the from for the industry and from the industry for our viewers and our readers hi i'm anil vanvari the founder ceo and editor in chief of the 20 year old indian television.com group of which the 15 year old animation express.com is a part animation express is the third largest animation vfx comics and gaming online publication in the world and the largest in india it is a go to destination for the industry in india and has been behind such in- initiatives as kids animation and most summit cam and the in an awards also uh, next month we've coming up game with games esports and more the summit is happening on the 7th and 8th of october with the who's who of the sector in participation you can find out more about it on our web- website animationexpress.com some hygiene to all the people who are participating in this webinar and uh, people who are watching it are watching us on facebook and our other outlets if you have any questions to ask please post them on our facebook page otherwise on the question and answer box on the zoom console now on to our panel uh, which is brought to us by autodesk thank you autodesk for supporting our initiative uh, our panel has some fabulous people mohit kapoor the vp advertising and innovation and new commerce i'm looking for the new commerce platform for geo uh, mohit kapoor welcome are you there mohit Hi. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Welcome. Welcome. Pavan Sardar. Yeah. Welcome. Pavan Sardar, the group CMO Marketing, Digital and E-Commerce Future Group. Welcome, Pavan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anil. My pleasure. Gaurav Mehta, the Chief Marketing Officer of Car Deco, Gadi and Z Wheels. A big hearty welcome to you, uh, Gaurav. Thanks a lot, Anil. Thanks for inviting me. My pleasure. Pleasure. Prathik Kumar, the Head Global E-Commerce of Vedant. fashions private limited that's manever you remember virat kohli and anushka sharma that lovely yes. ad that they put out the pvc welcome prateek thanks anil thanks a lot now do we have may on board as yet or is she coming is she yet to come on i don't see her but if she's here welcome megna this is welcome a lake later are you there megna thank you so much Not yeah there. i'm here thank you okay. so much uh, i am here you. yeah so she's the co-founder and ceo of mirror art by style do style styled dot dot me style dot me that's i got it right thank you surendra karandikar the founder and ceo of pro rigo software Pr- private limited the guy behind all the fancy vr that's being put out on e-commerce platforms today hi, hi. surendra welcome hi thanks for having me my pleasure samit shetty the senior technical sales specialist media and entertainment from autodesk india a big hello hi. to you samit we keep meeting hi. each other and, and i hope we keep meeting each other in future too definitely definitely for sure Thank you. I'd like to begin by asking all of you: Are you guys looking forward to the festival season? Do you see shoppers getting into an orgy of online shopping? We've been cooped up for so long. Governments are trying to open up trade even more and more. Restaurants and eating outlets are opening in Maharashtra. Cinema halls are going to entertain moviegoers from 1st October in West Bengal. Other states are surely going to follow. 
I think we put COVID 2019 behind us, despite the rising cases and deaths, and I've accepted as a part of our life. So do you all expect an online shopping uh, orgy going forward? I'd like to begin by, uh, you know, putting this question to, uh, uh, you know, to, 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 to Gaurav. Can you, can you begin by telling us, do you expect people to go out and really buy cars at this time? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think the leading matrix that we are seeing uh, on our platform and uh, otherwise also point that uh, the whole, uh, I think for three, four months, and April was the first month ever in, in Indian automobile history where not a single car was sold uh, or a two-wheeler. So, so from those depths uh, to a July uh, where the sales were equal to last year, July, and August also was a little bit lesser, but then I think September we are seeing better trends coming in. Uh, also, Anil, I think uh, a lot of two-wheelers, uh, which are dependent on tier two, tier three markets, uh, good monsoon, uh, the government schemes and like less impact of COVID has just, uh, uh, it just gives me hope that people are going to be uh, in the whole mindset of buying a, a, an automobile uh, uh, for, for them and their family. Uh, the side traffic is the highest ever with about five or eight percent of marketing that we used to do maybe two years back. So there's a lot of organic, there's a lot of direct interactions that are happening with the sites, which is the leading matrix that I was speaking about. I'm cautiously optimistic of the demand being strong in the festive season. I think the whole, um, I think that the biggest unlock for this demand will be the financing. Um, I think our financial sectors kick in, but I think a lot of it's going to be digitized um, we are seeing a, a, a lot of digital footprints becoming stronger than what they used to be uh, pre-COVID. So cautiously optimistic about A, the macro demand coming in, B, about it getting more digitized. Uh, so yeah, Anand, that's, that's how I look at the automobile sector during the festive season. Okay, my fellow panelist, uh, Gaurav has a hard stop at 12, so I'm going to be posing a few questions to him, then we'll move on to you, if you with, your, with your permission. So in terms of what kind of an experience are you, are you laying out for your uh, shoppers, people who are coming. Who's the, who's it? Uh, what's the kind of shopper? Is it is it women? Oh. Is it men? It depends on the category we are looking at, Anil. Like if we talk about say two wheelers, as I said, it's a tier two, tier three, uh, younger male. Uh, mostly we are talking about. If it's a new car, we are talking about a younger male from the bigger cities. If it's a used car, then it's a young, it's an older male from uh, tier one and tier two cities. So, so depending on the category we are talking about, the audience changes. Um, I think the participation of, of uh, women is about 22, 23%, but I think their decision-making uh, influences much more than what, they, uh, what the numbers tell. I think car buying for sure is a family decision. Uh, while even right now in India, I think men uh, front end the transactions and so on and so forth. But uh, without the lady of the house, uh, the decision is never taken. And so I think from all perspectives, um, it's going to be a joint call. Um, what we have also seen, Amnikanal, in the past six months, where I spoke about us having a highest traffic ever, is a lot of new users are coming in. A lot of younger users are coming in uh, on the site. And these are people who might not have wanted to buy the car or the two-wheeler in April, May, June, July, because there's a lot of like disturbance at that point upon time. Uh, but they were doing the research upfront to know which is the right car or bike for them to buy. And, and that's the really encouraging part about like, you know, you also stating that more and more people are getting onto digital. And then I look at like the whole digital universe as a pyramid. Uh, on the base, you have an, a huge number of people who are consuming very basic internet services. Maybe they are watching videos, maybe they are some gaming and so on and so forth. But as you go higher, the more evolved transaction pieces come along, uh, which is say buying something uh, of, of an e-commerce company, buying a car or a bike on a site like ours. That base I'm seeing broadening uh, much faster than what we have seen in our uh, history. So newer audience, different audience for different categories. That's, that's what I've seen. Okay. What about the experience? How are you enhancing that for them? Because, you know, you can have a VR kind of a, a feel of the car. I, I, will, I will, uh, the 360 degree view. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, what, what exactly are you going in for? And what are you using to get those experiences? What tools are you using to get those experiences to your, to your visitors? The car buying was already a very digitized industry. Um, about three, 3.6 million new cars were sold last year. Um, so that means about three lakh cars every month. 
Out of the three lakh car buyers uh, who are buying this car, about eighty-five percent of them used to be on car deco, uh, or the sister side, which is the wheels. So, so it was a very digitized journey already. But what's happened is there are a lot of offline interactions, uh, which are already getting online uh, even earlier. But then they just accelerated, like like the whole fact about three sixty degree view that I just spoke about. Any new car that is launched in the whole lockdown period, be it Honda City. Uh, be today today uh, the urban cruiser uh, press conference is happening as we not today i'm mean, last week it happened all those things people haven't been able to see in flesh gloster from mg came along uh, sure. last week and this is where the whole 360 degree views you engaging with the car doors opening them uh, walk arounds all these things have become super crucial so we have seen traction on these kind of functionalities on our side going up dramatically um also the whole fact of personalization um typically we do believe that there's nothing like a wrong car a bad car uh, all the cars are well engineered all the cars are like well marketed and everything but just due to a person's need state there's a better car for that person like i'm a very tall person i'm 6 feet 4 so for for me hyundai doesn't work because the cabin space is smaller uh but a honda works because the cabin size is bigger doesn't mean that honda is better than hyundai and otherwise there's a the right car uh for me based is my need state um and that's where uh, a technology that we have uh, which is a in-house technology called connector which is a big data personalization tool once you start surfing the site um then we understand what kind of information should be there for you uh next time round so if you're looking at say between say jeep compass versus um say a uh, top end verna then i know what's the third car i should put in the mix and which are the areas by which uh, your information gathering becomes much better rather than you going to a showroom getting a brochure so so i think from a it's a mix of personalization uh, big data personalization engines kicking in and uh, a much more richer immersive av experience that is digitize even the other offline experiences that were there pre covid so you're looking at chatbots you're looking at virtual assistants you're Absolutely. looking at sorry absolutely yeah we're looking at possibly uh, a guide online who's actually running you through the uh, the features of the car etc you know some some companies are actually having influencers coming and chatting about vehicles also internationally some auto 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 uh, e-commerce platforms yeah in our case i'm like you know we are a publisher ourselves um, so we have a talent pool of almost 35 auto journalists who are driving and riding these bikes and cars on a daily basis so they are the influencers for the auto buying community themselves so i think i mean that that has a big halo effect on uh, our impact so the, the, the reviews etc our video reviews are put out online, out online for as a reference tool by these respected journalists absolutely and and uh, as you've seen through data this is a big decision in either uh watching a new car in action and like i'm like when there's a new car like say a gloster which is coming i'm like when a person will buy gloster 2 or 3 months later when it's in the showroom so the most basic questions like how do i open the boot you know or, or where is the dicky button and so on and so forth also start coming up and that's where digitization really kicks in uh because we would have productified these uh information uh this this information on our pages or there would be a video uh so a person actually like it becomes almost like a e brochure i get it but i can't really drive the car in, on virtually can i I know I can I can have a simulated experience, but it's not the real thing. Like holding the Absolutely wheel, not. pressing not. the accelerator, pressing the brakes. You know, going no, from we are investing a lot of like you know tech bandwidth and making people understand how does a car sound like. Uh, if you were to go on car deco or zig wheel site, you can actually hear the exhaust and the engine engine uh, sounds for a lot of different bikes and cars. So whatever can be digitized is being digitized. Uh, how does a horn sound and so on and so forth. um how does the car look in the night in the morning so there are like you know various different uh, uh avatars uh that you can drive in and so on and so forth so whatever can be digitized is being digitized i think yeah, i mean so what are the tools i get it so what are the tools you're using what challenges you're facing on the technology on the design on the on on creating all this are there any challenges do you need anyone to help you mitigate those i think the the whole thing about speed of execution because you also know I'm like you know come from animation industry yourself I'm like you know the the detailing part uh is the one that takes a lot of time you can come out with something subpar pretty quickly but then that's not great uh use experience so are you like you know really churn out great quality 
digital aptas uh, at velocity i think that's the biggest challenge um, how do you make that interact very well on the uh, different form factors uh, on smaller screens i think that's that's an interesting challenge um, the whole thing about i that i spoke about how do you actually this little loss uh, in in translation of whatever you are digitizing be it horn be it the engine sounds and so on and so but how does that become as seamless as is the physical product i think the velocity uh, of a quality product is the single biggest problem and different form factor rendering fantastic samit i'm going to get on to you samit uh, you you deal with other companies too samit uh, you. you know what what are the experiences like on this front so uh, so anil uh, yeah we've been uh, dealing with a lot of e-commerce people across the country uh, i come from a technology company where 3d is uh, the main software and um, what we what i've also learned is a lot of e-commerce guys are not now getting into 3d uh, for various reason like when i dealt with a lot of customers the main primary business objective is to a first make sure that their customers get the right kind of experience like you know uh, whatever they buy is is whatever they have seen it online because that was that is still i think a bigger challenge because um, most of the time what they what they get is if even if it's slightly different in what they have seen it online they write comments and they're not happy with it and also they want to build a bridge between these two to make sure that at least whatever they have seen is exactly what they have bought uh, uh, they're getting at their doorstep the second challenge is uh, the experience like gaurav mentioned that most of the it's possible the uh, things have been already digitized except uh, driving experience and the touch experience uh, so when i asked them what are you doing to this so is they have they have tried to incorporate a lot of 3d as in cg in products because we know that photography is easy and um, can be done but what happens is even photography when you click pictures they tend to be slightly different than the actual products okay and then you have to deal with it you have to fix with it there are multiple things which you need to uh, which you need to you know you put efforts to fix it 3d becomes a very easy job even though 3d is cheating basically we call it like the best visual effects is cheating but then what happens is if the audience do not realize it it's it's a good cheat it's a good good way of executing a job so 3d plays a very important thing because you then try to match your your image which is there online exactly to what it is in the real life so yeah, that but, but yeah but to be fair to uh, gorov he's actually doing all this he's having immersive he's having pictures he's having yeah. walk around he's having all that so yeah. what about other you know in in terms of is that cutting edge is that is a top of class or could there be anything else that he could do which could be better so yeah so i mean 3d is it's already there people are using now how can you make it more user experience and you have more better quality is using products which autodesk has also been dealing with because we initially was only only dealing with animation and vfx studios and you know companies but now we know that e-commerce um, e-learning has become a big business mm -hmm. so in terms of quality in terms of textures like for example in in you know i just don't want to get into too much technicalities but our recent versions of softwares we have incorporated uh, pbr shaders like you know physical based shaders which actually gives you the real feel of a metal real feel of a leather real feel of a you know of a grungy object it can be anything so and it's not too complicated to create like you know a 3d artist can and obviously we know that the market is growing there's tons and tons of job we need to deliver at speed you can't just like he said he like he said in the, with the velocity he said velocity is a problem Yeah, and you yeah. know, in China, for instance, Alibaba brings out fifty million different, uh, you know, uh, images when they have that uh, flash sale every year. Correct, correct. So, so to make all these at speed, like you know, we have incorporated our tools to be much more faster than what it used to be before in terms of performance, in terms of quality, in terms of. Then we also wanted to. We also did, like you know, we 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 have acquired few companies which which people used to be dependent on. third party plugins it's now a part of the software so that the roi uh, investment on the software becomes lesser and you see a bigger roi in terms of business so all put together and of course coordination like you know there are tons and there are multiple teams who are working on it uh, i know of e-commerce business they have their own 3d team as 
at the same time they have they outsource jobs to various other small industries uh, smaller companies smaller studios like boutique studios who are very good at certain kind of 3d modeling and texturing the work has been outsourced also to them so so how how are they all going to connect to each other how are they all going to collaborate with each other is something which we also kept in mind that's why we have tools like shotgun to 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 have a you know collaborated environment to have a better review better fast uh, uh, uh updates on scheduling and all that so all these put together will definitely has been obviously definitely help you know um, help a lot of bigger e-commerce right from smaller to bigger everyone so there are various other techno technology yeah, we we'll get down to that yeah. in the as we go along as we speak to the other panelists got any thoughts beyond this because i yeah got to why you there yeah no i think i'm like uh, it's getting digitized at a rate i'm like you know earlier we used to take the solutions to the oems so now i think oems and dealers are asking for digital solutions um uh, to digitize their offline touch points so i think i'm like pretty much reiterating what i spoke and i think what samit also spoke about i think velocity high quality things are most necessary for this to happen uh, faster to give a much more immersive and as real life and experience as possible um yeah well, what will happen when you have those 300 million online by 2025 maybe earlier 2023 24 because of digitization what will you all guys do burn rubber <laughs> so i didn't that I didn't get that question properly so what will you all guys do will you burn rubber that means you'll have to really accelerate everything when you have 300 million shoppers online Right. That's the beauty of being in a digital business, right? I But mean, in terms I mean, of the volume, volume, it, the volume is going to go higher. The requirements are going to go higher. Everything's going to go higher. And that's the beauty of being in a digital business. We are digital natives, so we know how to like you know get to scale very very quickly. At least in the online world, offline world is not really our domain expertise, and we are learning as we go. But to get to three hundred million, you can talk about like five hundred million, and I think we can like find a solution pretty quickly to that. But uh, so that's in terms of delivering the experience going forward. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, look. once you got like you know good fundamentals and building algorithms and building solutions is the easier part so i'm not too worried about like you know from 30 to 300 million i think that can be done but but uh, yeah the offline and online ka jo merger hai i mean that's the interesting part i think I and mean, that's the one that'll keep me awake okay thank you for that i'll go on to the rest of the panel sorry for keeping you guys waiting but now it's on, on, on to you uh i'll begin begin the only lady on the panel megna so what's it looking like the festival period for you guys So I'll briefly tell you about what we do and the industry that I'm focusing in, so that you get the relevant answer. So we are working on uh, revolutionizing the jewelry shopping experience through augmented reality. And uh, you know, as we all know, that the state we are in, we are all sitting at our houses right now. And we started this almost a year and a half back, where a person could just walk into a store and try the entire inventory of a jeweler um, just via an iPad. and you know in real time so you no lang- longer have to uh, follow any instructions use static images etc and uh, we realized that initially there was a lot of hiccup from from specially jewelers uh, to digitize inventory because there is a lot of cost involved you know you need to photograph it in the right way and when you are talking about augmented reality i think you know as uh, as gaurav and uh, samit said you know about 3d so we started with 3d but what we realized and uh, when you rightly said anil that you know when there are going to be like you know so many sqs or so many products online then what happens so what we realized the biggest challenge with 3d was that firstly it it reduces the speed uh, because there are heavy files also people don't have access to 3d images and we we found a very quick i, w- I would not call it hack but i would call it a solution that how do we give that experience with 2d images so we we started working on 2d and currently we are working with around 1 lakh unique sqs in jewelry uh, we are working with around 225 jewelers across the world uh, where we have digitized their inventory and uh, close to inventory worth close to 300 crores is is available for try on and now after after lockdown uh, i'm seeing like a totally different transformation where every every jeweler on the planet i would say want to go digital wants to have this experience of ar vr and integrated to ecom so currently if you see some of the top websites if you go to tanish.co.in every product that has got a try on button can be virtually try or tried, tried on through miras and that is the whole beauty of transformation i feel that is immersive experience where 
I am sitting at the comfort of my house right now, and I can go to these websites and just see how products looks on me. So whether it is the sizing, whether it is the look and feel, I know what looks good on my face. I can share it with my friends. I can you know do a Zoom call, do a screen sharing, and actually shop together. So that is what I think that you know this whole uh, revolutionizing experience that we have, and the and the whole new world that we are in. I think immersive experience is bringing like a, a huge, huge revolution. Fantastic! That's really interesting. I'll come to you later, Mohit. As sure. far as you're concerned, your 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 guys are going to drive social commerce in India. So, in terms of uh, you know shopping through WhatsApp, through Facebook, uh, uh, I don't know Instagram going forward. I have no idea where where will go. Your guys, the world is your playground. Uh, like like you know you'll have uh, driven uh, mobility throughout the nation and into parts where we didn't know we could reach. so uh, what's 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 the experience of looking at uh, you know i know you're going to be bringing in merchants primarily but do the merchants want a better experience so i'll, I'll uh, you know this is not just uh, like a geo question actually let me let me just put a set a premise uh, so the way we look at uh, india market i mean we look at india as three indians so we have an india a and india b and c right about 250 260 270 million homes on the india a we got these 50 million homes within that about 10 odd million homes if you call as elite and what 40 odd million is your you know urban and then you have 100 110 million in the as india b which is your semi urban and then you have the rural uh, but more on the on the acc side now and, and what is what has happened till now is about uh, you know when we say we have 100 110 million e-commerce shoppers right now that's primarily india a or you know we have, we have not even covered that as of now uh and uh, and if we have if the, if the industry has to be now moved from 100 million to 300 million you know from a 30 billion to you know, the big number you were, you were talking about uh, recently uh you know then uh then i think we need, really need to understand who who are these next 200 million users i can understand you know both jewelry and cars would fall under fall under that uh, you know india a or the you know the, or the top side of india a and where there are requirements of uh, 3d and uh, uh Uh, you know ar vr and virtual uh, you know totally uh, you know tot- uh, you know totally uh, totally get that but i think uh, but but just to go further from, from a current 100 million to, to to 300 million i think there has to be a ref- uh, there has to be uh, you know a different thought process and uh, and there are two parts of it actually so one part of course is that uh, we really have to have a uh, a model and a and a and an understanding of uh, this set of users and uh, and then actually give them and give them an online experience and the second part is that you know we, we also have to understand that today uh, you know we're a country of about 60 62 million uh, uh, smes uh, smes uh, in, you know in our country about 30 30 30 32 million are actually a retail uh, kirana outlets only and uh, about 10 odd million where let's say brands like inova would be delivering but today with the whole covid uh, which has happened i mean just about every SME is uh, is being forced into you know creating uh, an online option per se while delivering to this uh, you know because it largely you know delivers to this uh, the India B as we call it India C is actually no market now so 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 that being the premise actually so uh, uh, you know the, my uh, so it's my my simple uh, take is that see the market is uh, is ma- is massive. and uh, big players uh, already there amazon flipkart jio has uh, taken positions uh, 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 you know clearly with with ajio and with jio mart and with uh, some of the investments we've uh, we've uh, you know we've done on the modern trade side uh, uh, you know so, so so all that is there uh, so while these companies will uh, as these companies have to move to the to, to india b they uh, they have to look for slightly differentiated model and of course we have one model which we are working with facebook right now wherein uh, wherein we can we open up shopping uh, you know within whatsapp and uh, and how we onboard the, the small merchants uh, uh, and, and and you know uh, and happens we, we have actually two models on the commerce we have three models on the commerce side we have jio mart which is a direct to consumer model we have another model where we actually have a pos uh which can move into a retail outlet and we can convert that shop into a smart shop and uh, so we collect the orders and the delivery happens to the shop and uh, we have of course yet the third model which is a which is a whatsapp uh, uh you know commerce model 
there are other bigger things happening in the industry like facebook is uh, you know along with shopify is uh, you know planning to onboard millions of these smbs uh, and helping them set up shops and uh, uh, and you know and, uh, and 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 deliver deliver online so so there's lots going on so so i'm not trying i'm just, I'm just trying to you know say what all is going on in the industry and uh, uh, but i think somewhere you know we are uh, we have to we have to build something uh, which india b understands one two we have to take these 50 60 million smbs with us right uh, because you know imagine you know once the benford law start kicking in starts kicking in right that basically means uh, and you know in you know in the online space the bigger gets bigger and the smaller you know actually uh, it's a problem for them so i think from reliance perspective we've got uh, so we have to think very responsibly uh, we have to look at uh, 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 so so i just wanted to give you a view view that at least the way we look at uh, look at things we're not here to just take away all the business and uh, but i think it has to be right thing so i think from reliance uh, from geo perspective uh, i would say that we are uh, we work we are we are work in progress uh, specifically on the on the india b side of things and uh, uh, and i think at the same time i would say is that because it's such a massive industry opening up uh, you know there is uh, uh, there is a time where some of the startups uh, can come into the e-commerce space because uh, the bigger guys uh, you know they uh, you know as you as you start as you become bigger and bigger your ability to innovate actually decreases and uh, but 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 you know some of the some of the new guys can move in so so now coming to the point uh, i think we have to uh, there should be some startups in india right who should look east uh, who should also look west i'll probably take two examples uh, i don't know how much time we have but i'll probably just take quick two quick examples uh, you know i was uh, so i've been reading a lot uh, uh, studying a lot about this company called yunji in china right Uh, it's a, it's a social commerce company it's actually a membership led uh, business interestingly uh, you, you know you should uh, uh, it started as a more more a more as a pyramid model and uh, you know and, but it's 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 a, it's a social commerce piece the, the important thing here is that they actually adopted you know all the small merchants and uh, and took care of their uh, you know uh, sourcing requirements right and so it's it's in it's an s to b c model so it's supply to business to consumer uh, model and uh, you know it's it's a it's already a billion dollar company in in china and uh, uh, there are many more examples in china like that actually uh, and i'll take one more example like uh, coop in uh, in us uh, you know started by a celebrity started with a newsletter probably 150000 uh, newsletter reaches in the, in the first year i mean today uh, you know it's got what 8 million customers the brand itself cost about 250 million uh, completely built on social uh, uh, you, you know on social i mean there's this time positive but it's it's a, it's a great uh, story india there is some uh, there are interesting st- uh, things happening there's misho there's bulbul uh, there's also something called deal share uh, you know and interestingly if you notice that in the social commerce Uh, I, i don't know people are realizing but there is a lot of money being available now for social commerce i mean there must be a reason facebook uh, quickly invested uh, uh, you know in uh, in misho and uh, bulbul is you know raised uh, raised uh, raised a good round deal share fairly quickly you know just one one and a half years old raised about 11 million dollars but these are the companies to be looked at so uh, you know who can yeah, yeah. cater to the india b and uh, that's what i've really mean uh, you know on the you know on the social commerce side so i think uh, so like going back to when we were being the cardo example is a final thing that yes i mean as we keep going coming down on the you know the entire pyramid you know uh, uh, you know from essentials to utilities to and and, and you know and, and jewelry can be right at the right at the top uh, you know different things have to be done uh, uh, you know uh, to actually deliver uh, you know if, an efficient uh, model but we have to take our smbs with us uh, that's that's the that's the underlying point yeah no i get that but so the experience uh, you know I and mean, if we can keep it shorter this time in terms of building that experience uh, building imagery building videos building assistance to help them all that is part of the game plan right for your smes that you are dealing with uh i i think the i think the big problem to solve is uh, 
you know, there is a, I'll just say one simple word, you know, a word, which is that, you know, when the sale happens, it's, uh, it's actually, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a type of seduction, you know, which happens inside a retail outlet, for example, where the shopkeeper understands the seduction very really well. I think uh, and that's very different than creating digital, uh, you know, 3D catalogs and, uh, uh, and you know, there, there are plenty of things which go in. So to answer your question, uh, uh, it's actually a lot more, a lot deeper than, uh, than just setting out uh, some virtual, uh, you know, driving uh, situations, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, our experiences online. It is, it's a lot more than that. It's a mix of many things. I understand. Yeah, it's a science. So let's, you know, we'll come to that later. Let's move on to uh, Pratik in terms of, uh, you know, Maniver has been a driver of, uh, of, of moments of celebration. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a brand which has grown out of nowhere in the past 10 years. So how is the online experience looking like going forward? I mean, are you seeing excitement coming on? You know, marriages are, are smaller now. Celebrations are smaller. So how do you see that play, playing out? So if you're talking about the pre-COVID and the post-COVID scenario, right? Because uh, this festive wear or the kurta or uh, celebration is, uh, is, uh, is a affair of a season base, right? The oh. category itself. Uh, so the pre-COVID itself, like the e-commerce or the online pace uh, uh, or the business for the Manever as a brand, we don't have only Manever, we do have another four brands with the name of Mohe, Mantham, Manu Mepaz also, but uh, the most popular brand which we do have it in our bucket is uh, with the name of Manever. Uh, so we were already been uh, experiencing the uh, the jump of almost 250%, more than that, like on year on year basis on the overall revenue. Uh, when this uh, COVID thing actually happened in the month of March, right? So the, in the month of March or April, like nobody was actually delivering anything. The logistic partner was, was not actually operational. But uh, after that, uh, we have actually started seeing the more than 400% jump into the like-to-like -like growth into the online revenue, right? Which was actually uh, like started thinking of the, okay, there is a lot of potential, a lot of uh, paces there, like which is available in online as a space as of now. And that 400% four, jump into the online space, that itself, if I'm just talking about my website, which is manever.com, that itself without COD offering, right? So the 100% of our order was uh, were prepaid, right? So, and beyond that, like after that also, if you're, if uh, like we were getting a 350% or 400% jump, that itself was actually giving us a sense that, okay, there is a lot of things uh, needs to be added into the bucket or the, like uh, in terms of the offering to the customer so that they can actually start uh, buying or uh, like uh, uh, engaging with the brand online into the next level. Uh, so uh, when we are actually talking about the season, like we are in next 10 to 15 days, uh, the wedding season is going to, we are going to hit the wedding season as well as the festival season as well. Uh, but what we have actually seen, like even the Pitra season, right, which, uh, which was in the first two weeks or the first half of the month, last uh, this month itself, we haven't seen any kind of a, like we can say, a hit into our revenue. Right, so that itself means uh, it was showing us like the people are intent to buy online, right? So uh, if I'm talking about the last three months or four months down the line, we have done a lot of thing into the e-commerce uh, front to actually facilitate the uh, like our online users, right? Who was actually willing to buy something online from our brand. Uh, so we have gone uh, like gone up with a feature of a uh, book an appointment, right? Because because of the COVID, like nobody actually want to go out from their house without an appointment, right? Because the ticket size is so high. Uh, we are not actually selling something at a cost of 600 bucks. Like we are, people are not actually looking for any kind of a uh, book an appointment. It is a family affair, right? If you, if somebody is getting married, uh, there might be possible like they're going to buy a, buy a Shirwani worth cost of 50,000. They need their love beings to actually go and like enter into any of our store. To, to just wanted to actually go there, they want to have an insurity, like, okay, whether I'm going to come over there, like the store manager will go to free uh, to actually attend me into the, into the same way or the other way uh, uh, down the line, right? So that is something which with, with which we have actually gone live on the website and we are actually getting almost 200 to 300 appointments all over India or for our 540 stores on a daily basis. Uh, along with that, like we have actually offered uh, the WhatsApp video call for our customers, right? If somebody actually want to see any of the product uh, onto the WhatsApp video call from any of the store, they can actually see it. And even if they are actually ordering and calling the uh, calling the store manager to send that particular merchandise, which is actually closer to the, his house or his uh, the customer address, uh, the store manager actually uh, is assisting the, that customer. 
on the on the same same line uh, we have actually gone live with our chatbot uh, on the website right so and which is actually giving us a very good result almost uh, uh, like uh, 2000 people are actually interacting with our chatbot on a daily basis right and where uh, with the with the where we do have hardly one or two people in the agent side right so the 90% of the queries are actually being answered by the chatbot itself right which is a value proposition for us right in place of having a two people we we were supposed to actually hire a five people right so that is something which is there uh, so uh, like on the other way like we have actually launched our app also like manuver has launched our app uh, uh, almost two weeks back and uh, because of the reason people uh, were actually searching for our brand in within play store and even the ios right uh, so that makes us as a brand to actually go live with our app right because that was the customer demand uh, that was uh, the customer where the uh, like customer was actually asking for their brand right so these are the things like uh, like along with that like we are actually doing a lot of thing like uh, related to the 3d view right we are working on one project where, where, where like it will be an online project first where we are going to start offering the customers to actually experience the product on their body itself right while just opening that uh, feature so and basically virtual trials yeah the virtual trials right so that might take some time that's why we have actually have a plan b right so that's why we have started uh, uploading uh, some kind of like a view video of our product right so if it is going to take another 15 20 days and uh, my customers are actually looking for that we are actually doing it in that way right because that is asked from the customer side for, from the brand itself uh, so uh, in the same way like i am talking about like uh, yeah uh, even like if i am talking about in india right i don't know like I, personally i don't aware of uh, if any of the apparel brand in india has actually launched the whatsapp uh, chatbot Uh, but in next 10 days we are actually going live with the whatsapp e-commerce also right so while actually the users can actually chat with our uh, uh, over the over the whatsapp and they can actually see the product there itself and they can make the payment and we will deliver it at their doorstep uh, right so it is a pilot project we, we were just saying that okay even if the two brands in india have actually uh, like uh, launched this thing but we as a brand or the category leader into its own category uh, right we must actually go and like test out this particular piece Uh, along with that like we know it like the covid uh, uh, is uh, there right so people are not shying away to actually touch and feel right so i can say like even if customers are actually entering into our stores and they want to actually see the whole catalog which usually comes under the name of endless i right which requires a lot of money to actually invest uh, and roll out roll out any one app into the 500 plus stores it itself is a very big project so we are doing one in house project right so we are actually giving an option to the customer who server is going to visit my store uh, to actually see what kind of a catalog we do have it within that store through the mobile phone we are going to offer one qr code which is which is uh, the customer is going to scan it and they will be able to see the that store inventory fast okay so and we are that is not a like that there we are not uh, actually enabling any kind of a buy now option right we are just saying that to okay, add the products into your cart and then show it to the store manager he will going to assist you right so that the touch wala problem like will not going to be there right people if they are liking it they will add it they will going to definitely want to buy it uh, at the same time like uh, i can say like we are actually working on one, another project which is uh, like uh, which is a community building right because uh, buying for your own marriage right it is a it is not a individual decision you need to actually take certain uh, certain uh, like a, like a, what you can say a feedback from your friends your family your spouse or would be spouse or whatever it is right so we are actually making one concept online where you can uh, while uh, browsing the website you can actually add certain products and then start taking and inviting your loved ones into our platform by our for asking for certain questions right so these are the thing which is actually going to make our brand or our present into online as a category will be more prominent in the future as well as uh, this is the particular ask from the customer itself right that makes the brand actually start feeling of okay we are doing wonders into the offline world but uh, now it is the time for the e-commerce uh, i can say like a era or a journey or a, a what you can say like a time then we have to we as a brand have to be present in lots of certain ways to be uh, there on the that's it. that's really nice to you now pavan you're an essential category with some mode of lifestyle uh, what what have your experiences been on the online space and what is your expectation going forward what are your experiences you're providing to your consumer do they want do they, nobody wants to see a 3d model of a vegetable or of uh, of spices so what are the right. experiences your guys have been providing 
I think firstly, I think Pratik spoke a lot about uh, uh, organized retail per se. So a lot of points may be repeated when I speak. Uh, that it's also glad to know that all the retailers face the same challenge and maybe come up with similar solutions. Uh, to begin with, uh, like as I spoke even last time, I think uh, this whole idea of omni-channel has finally come into life. Uh, just just beyond boardrooms, right? I mean, pre-COVID, it was always a part of boardroom discussion, but now it's reality. I mean, no one's uh, no one can actually uh, you know stay away from it or or have to ensure because finally I, I think a customer or a consumer is going to decide what one wants to do and how it wants to interact with the business or the brand, right? Uh, I think that's one big change which we, which I can see. And because of this change, there have been like multiple challenges which has been put up uh, for most of the retailers. And I think we all are trying to address it, right? Like as Pratik spoke of uh, assisted shopping as, as we call it, right? To begin with. Uh, you know, and 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 if if somebody is not willing to come to the store, but you're still a touch and feel brand, you're not like a predominantly you're not an e-commerce brand, right? Because the moment you go into an Amazon, your expectation is something else compared to coming to a Big Bazaar or a FBB or a Central, right? I think the first thing which we did was got into assisted shopping, which obviously I think a lot of these features, what Pratik spoke of, whether it's a you know, WhatsApp, video calling to even like, I think, uh, uh, I mean, India is a full Jagadu country, as we all know it, right? Lots of housewives were actually, you know, taking a list, creating a list on a piece of paper, taking a photo and sending it to us. And we were delivering it, right? So uh, I think a lot of those things uh, started to come about uh, in the process. Uh, while these, these kind of uh, experiences, I think the store was creating and we were taking help of whatever technology which was available on board right now uh, and which which is what i think we were using it in terms of creating business or interaction with the customer right even of sh fashion shopping right it cannot happen if the customer doesn't want to see it i mean that's why they come to our store so that actually changed uh, from a point of view of let's say a video calling i mean that played a big role in terms of you know customers seeing options and you know converting them right and obviously we sending them to their homes and so on right so I think a lot of those changes sort of happened. And obviously, we had to also go e-commerce, which we did with Big Bazaar. And just uh, two weeks back, we've launched even Central, for example. You know, uh, uh, That's another platform which we launched because we realized that, again, finally, the decision has to be with the consumer, right? I think there's a strong loyalty towards the brand. Uh, there's not, uh, you know, no one is not taking away from it at all. But then the decision needs to be left to the consumer, uh, whether, uh, you know, the customers want to come to the store or they want to interact on the virtual platform, whether it's through e-commerce, whether it's through, you know, uh, messaging, whether, whether it's through video calling. Finally, that needs to be left to the audience, right? So I think these were some of the uh, big challenges which we are addressing as we go. Uh, right and obviously seeing a lot of opportunities come coming about and and finally uh, things like we also have to leave it to the customer that you know one wants to book it online and then maybe pick it up from the store right doesn't want to spend time uh, at the store uh, maybe just wants he's very sure of what he wants to buy we keep it ready for him and then pack it and you know he can collect it immediately right uh, as i speak i think the entire eastern india which is uh, which is in terms of pujo buying currently there's a lot of, even as, as Pratik spoke, uh, we are also doing, uh, I wouldn't call it like appointment shopping. I mean, that's slightly more uh, exclusive in that sense. This is more to address social distancing, you know, uh, uh, the fact that, you know, if you are able to book it online and give us a slot, then, you know, uh, we'll, we'll ensure that it's a smooth shopping for you. And, and that's how we are able to control or maintain social distancing through creating such bookings, right? So as a, you know, different needs, uh, creating different solutions for us. I think that's that's the process which we are in. And even our plus size business, for example, all online, right? I mean, uh, while I think it's a great business and again, seen a huge amount of growth online, but I think one of the big need which we are also figured from the customers that size, right? Size is the big, big part of a plus size business buying. So that's where we went virtual and just giving solution to people that even if you tell us basics, we'll tell you what size will suit you, right? And therefore you can either buy it online or you can pick it up from, pick it up from the store. So I think, yeah, that's the gamut of things which is going on and we are dealing with it. And obviously trying to change our mindset and the way we work. 
lots going on at this point in time. Sure, but it's all about visual experience when it comes to fashion and lifestyle, which is something right. like, you know, and also the immersive experience, which is something I think Surindra is providing to companies. Yeah. Am I right, Surindra? How's your, how's, is the demand for, uh, you know, virtual experiences, assisted experiences, videos, etc. Have you seen that going up from your customers? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, just to give you a little background, you know, we, uh, we have built a customer experience and relationship management platform, and we did that about five years ago. Uh, you know, uh, build it uh, and then verticalized it uh, for retail, and then you know, uh, specifically for jewelry. You know, there's another uh, you know, vertical and so on. But the whole idea uh, of you know uh, building that platform uh, was to acknowledge uh, and address the requirement that you know uh, we will see to continue that you know uh, the lines between retail channels will will blur as uh, as uh, you know Pawan and Pratib also talked about uh, you know so there's 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 going to be a need or demand for more and more immersive commerce uh, you know so. Uh, uh, Typical examples are, you know, uh, you go, uh, a consumer goes, uh, you know, tries to shortlist certain products, let's say on a website or an e-commerce mm -hmm. portal and then shortlist them. And then, you know, uh, maybe, maybe they don't do anything, but, uh, but maybe six months down the line, the person actually, you know, walks into the store and imagine if the, the salesperson there uh, knows actually the entire browsing history of, uh, of this particular customer, you know, it, uh, it changes the whole game uh, when it comes to you know uh, addressing the needs of that customer. Uh, so it's all it's all about personalization. That's what we we hear a lot, right? And then uh, again, you know, given the fact that millennials are you know uh, there's an increasing share of millennials going and buying stuff now. Um, and then as as we all know, you know, it, it, for them it's all about experiences than the things. Uh, so so the omni channel part is what. Uh, uh, really drives the businesses uh, you know to provide that next level of experience to their consumers and that's exactly what we build so so essentially we, we and, and we have seen so probably five years ago you know we were probably a little ahead of time maybe in india uh, because i think as as uh, i think pawan you said you know the, the discussion of omni channel was probably confined to boardroom and it wasn't really you know uh, taking off in terms of you know uh, sort of you know investing in technologies that enable them uh, but but now we have seen definitely in the last one year, you know, there's that accelerated adoption of, uh, you know, the uh, technologies that help, you know, uh, finally create that brand presence. And so the platform that we have built, it offers a variety of things, you know, uh, so one can go online, uh, open a, an e-commerce store or just build a branding site, you know, build a digital catalog. Uh, presented to the customers, uh, you have, uh, uh, and then there's a, there's a complete integration at the back end where then the customers, if they walk into the store, uh, you know the salespeople uh, have you know uh, have, have applications on their tablet. Uh, they can already pull the the, uh, the history of their purchase or you know even shortlist uh, shortlisting histories, and then uh, and then in today's uh, uh, you know post COVID environment. You know, Add to that the complexities of social distancing. So there's a need for appointment booking. There's a need for assisted, uh, you know, discovery of items that they want. You know, so uh, so there's a need to have chatbots. There's a need to have uh, you know video calling facility, appointment booking. So we we built all these features uh, in an integrated platform. So uh, if a business really wants to go digital, uh, we're facilitating that. Uh, you know, uh, by uh, by providing all these options, so 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 imagine you know somebody walking by uh, uh, by a street and then you see a big holding of uh, uh, with with a nice dress and 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 a couple of beautiful earrings and then uh, it triggers that impulse of you know oh will that look cool on me right and then uh, there's a, there's a QR code the person scans the QR code using his or her mobile and then an app comes up which shows you know that particular jewelry item. You know, being rendered on their photo or you know on, on their video you know so we have actually uh, you know, so, sort of you know provided a technology that enables these kinds of experiences uh, and and we have seen uh, the, uh, the the need is felt now more than ever uh, by by retailers uh, especially in the uh, uh, in, in the luxury space uh, or you know uh, non-essential items so to say where you know uh, 
there's a need to there's a need to engage customers continuously uh, no matter where they are and and that's that's the technology that we are providing great you know i'm just reading an hbr article in june uh you know most online shopping experiences were built on generic templates but with millennials and gen z funneling funneling themselves into even narrower aesthetic tribes online online shopping no longer has to cater to the masses maybe stores are only one typology in an array of ways we could interact with products could online ex- shopping exist as a surreal world of a discovery like the popular 90s game mist so uh, you know gucci is creating i know this is for the luxury whereas the masses are different which is what mohit was saying uh, they have virtual museums they have uh, you know uh, there's asop which is offering a taxonomy of design which allows visitors to browse all the materials colors and textures of their stores you know they can all, you can also build adventure as a secret sauce that makes one brand stand out subscription services are another thing that are really coming up where you remember the uh, uh, dollar the dollar store or the do- dollar brand i forgot the name of the company which is online which was taken over by uh, one of the big fmcgs where you subscribe and you get razors uh, you know at, at a frequency so you know there are a lot of other ways of uh, fa- of uh, of engaging and surprising and wowing customers so i like your your comments on the way ahead for the for the online shopping beginning with uh, mohit what do we see going forward yeah so no uh, i'll just continue with what you say actually you know, this is a this is a great line of thought so uh, i'll share an example i you know uh, you know on sunday i went down to decathlon uh, to pick up a bicycle right and uh, so i could experience a bicycle but uh, they said you have to order it online you know the, the guy helped he just told me you download this app and help me a little bit and uh, and i think uh, i think the offline as we see it right now is going to is going to uh, you know a very large part of it will become experience zones and uh, uh, and this whole assisted selling will happen through that to a large screen and, and through a catalog and uh, and you know and uh, yeah that's that's what's uh, that and we and we've tried that actually so we as geo we have about uh, you know close to 6 and a half thousand geo points so every tehsil we have a geo point which is like a 7 800 square feet small shop and uh, which caters to x number of small towns and villages in the, in the vicinity and we have sampled um, some kind of a catalog sale there so basically people can walk in and you know uh, browse through they can buy a washing machine or a tv or or uh, or, a, or some you know or a shoe or something and uh, so they are assisted and they make the order and then it gets shipped uh, directly so uh, so you know so I, th- i think you cannot really take away the the front end or the or the physical nature of shopping and uh, but there is going to be more and more digitization which will happen inside but and all the uh, the great tech uh, is going to be at the largely at the back end and uh, so yeah that's what that's what what we're looking at and that, yeah so that's that's the this we are really headed there so like that yeah pavan you know going forward what do we see what innovations do we see yeah, uh, so do I, we I, see I, voice assisted do we see voice assisted, assisted shopping coming in because that's something people were really driving towards to be see what are the other innovations so i quite like what uh, mohit said uh, uh, from a point of view of saying that uh, let's look at uh, you know uh, uh, stores typically as exhibition centers sure. and therefore i think the stores can really up their capacity in terms of doing business right the moment you put a layer of online or a digital on top of it right so it's not dependent on just the people who come inside the store and imagine a store can literally become a warehouse for you like right if you if you imagine and think from that perspective and i'm i'm assuming it's just the beginning uh, it's it's a it's a change of era uh, i'm sure covid is brought in in the country and i'm sure there will be a lot of innovation which will be seen keeping upping the capacity of a particular store format business i think that can be immense if you look at it just a layer of adding digital on top of it i don't think it's it's going to be constrained with you know what you get number of people inside the store i think i i see that as a big big larger opportunity if you ask me and i know i just had one uh, one very quick thing it was an interesting thing when we were figuring out this whole grocery purchase and we actually did some study to see how people make grocery purchase and we realized very large amount of grocery purchase happens on phone Yeah. Uh, you know thus bara you know there are 10 12 things which are spoken on the phone now that very conveniently moved into whatsapp and uh, and then you know the you know the, the shopkeeper actually sends it out 
so we did create a, a very simple uh, algo inside geo chat one of our uh, you know uh, chat apps wherein uh, you could just uh, randomly write the way you write but you know the system picks up these products inputs prices and calculates and you know does all of that i quite like that example which came from somewhere that you know people make those lists and take a picture of that and sends it i, I think those grass grassroots level simple innovations which are you know which comes out of the current habits of people within that specific segment we are in right now is uh, is where actually will be the most uh, most effective solutions uh, you know of the future now digital digital can adapt to these current habits uh, of people and uh, so yeah so just just want to you know that i have relatives in canada in uh, vancouver in surrey close to uh, vancouver they actually what they're doing is they're young people they there's an app which is aggregator who aggregates orders and it sends these people to buy it from the physical store and then it's delivered by them yeah. so those are the new experiences which is in the real world and digital so you go online you send in you send in the uh, your shopping list they go and buy it and and then the people are doing it are being paid $25 an hour for this and students college guys are going out and doing this it's like the uber of shopping so a lot more lot, lot more innovations are coming in now uh, going on to uh, you know summit uh you know what are some of the world class practices you see emerging on on the virtual uh, experience as far as delighting the consumers concerned samit yeah 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 so i'll um, second to what uh, mohit has said and also to what megna has said you know uh, 3d of course is 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 difficult or time consuming uh, but so we we again tell our customers that use 3d to to things which you cannot achieve it in real life or it's really difficult uh things which are easier just go, because you guys have thousands and lakhs of products like right? you can't just keep developing every them every uh, products in 3d but things which are easier you can just there use them and of course like groceries and all you don't need them as 3d but there are a couple of things which need a lot of detailing which you can't just go through it and uh, you know shoot it or something like that for example in technology we have a photo pho photogrammetry tool uh, people who have used 3d know that you know you have to model something from scratch which is time consuming but just taking some couple of photographs like you know it can be from the mobile phone as well in 360 degree, degrees it can be some 40 or 50 pictures upload it on the autodesk cloud which we call it as recap pro and within within some time the 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 ai automatically stitches all the pictures and gives you a 3d model so what happens is you don't really have to create something from scratch you you get a model which is almost 90 to 95% ready and all you need to do is just do some fine tune tweaking and then the model is ready right that's 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 the easiest way to get a model done which from the customers what i've heard is saves at least two or three days of a job i'm talking about the average model so imagine a three days job done in half a day okay saves a lot of time now you have to do texturing and all which i spoke about in terms of pbr shaders which is automated you just drag and drop and you have those kind of uh, gold realistic grungy metal everything uh, leather everything uh, available with just a click of button then it comes rendering i don't know how many of you guys you know that rendering has been always a pain uh, for major everyone major pain major pain yeah. um, yeah. and it's still there i'm like we don't see it disappearing in just uh, uh, a click but we have seen a lot of differences in terms of getting the rendering time down drastically um, and this, the worst thing is okay you can split the renders on render farms to get the job done faster but what about the guy the person the artist who is doing the look and development for example uh, in the case of jewelry lighting plays a very important role if the lighting is good the jewelry will definitely look more appealing right it's not just uh, basic lighting so person who is doing the lighting in the software spends at least a day doing or maybe half a day doing that lighting for that one piece of jewelry now that rendering if it takes half an hour to just render one frame for him to see how the outcome is it he's going to lose patience and drop the quality right he's not going to add more iterations to his creativeness so gpu rendering has been a integral part like autodesk has um, something called as arnold which is which we acquired 4 uh, years back and now that has been gpu rendering so anything that takes say we half an hour or one hour is done in say about a minute or two imagine the time saved by an artist and it's not just time saves he is also you know being more patient he wants to add more iterations and the quality of output would be much more better 
so all these put together would definitely bring up the quality of the 3d thing and at the same time bring down the time which is needed to uh, generally what which was needed by an artist um, and of course you guys you got to say a lot of roi in terms of producing more uh, outputs than what used to be the case before you know that's great so, but I, i can imagine you know uh, imagine uh, if i if i'm a shopper i want to buy a pair of sunglasses which could be cheap and which could be very expensive going from as low as 1000 bucks going up to or 500 bucks going to as high as you know 70000 bucks a lakh of rupees so there's a broad range everyone wants to wear sunglasses i i, I just want to add yeah i just want to add to what prateek mentioned is like you know people want to try it uh, without coming to the store now because they don't want yeah. to travel they don't want to be in you know in uh, person with 10 15 people so you know you they can have like you know every person every person have their own statistics like vital statistics their the the chest size their shoulder size their waist size and all if and i know that any one any any person can just send their size to 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 manivar for example and they have they can have templates of mannequins in, in 3d and if they can have uh, costumes of and of course the designs are there so they can have those do those 3d uh, you know sherwanis ready by default and all they need to do is just tweak it by the size of that person and say share it with them in 360 degree it it gives you see med, all the mannequins which i see outside the shops are like you know real model kind of thing but you need to be you need to show them what exactly how exactly is going to look on your body right that gives you a very a personal uh, you know kind of a touch to the to the consumers and that's very easy to do now so people now now they are so used to online thing that anything you give them in customized way in on online they are ready they they're willing to participate and that's that's something which will change the entire shopping industry and that's what we have been seeing in terms of usage of 3d personalization customization quality uh, to what exactly what the audience or the consumer are looking at uh, on the online thing and what they did. so and so photo realism needn't be very uh, one expensive or very cumbersome yep true 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 okay that's what you're saying so uh, any of you guys i mean how how close do you want to get to the real product uh, you know pavan meghna or uh, mohit surendra all of you all how close you all want to get to the real product online i think as close as possible because unless the person feels that they are really wearing it or seeing it on themselves i think uh, you know shopping immediately is going to become a challenge then they will still want to go touch and feel see how it looks etc so i think the closest it looks to you like for example what we do at mirage i mean i personally feel there are a lot of times when you can't even differentiate whether a person is really wearing it or it's just you know uh, wearing it in ar so but, i but think but you see a restriction at being a luxury item but i think gold in india is not a luxury jewelry is not luxury we are yeah. one of the biggest holders of gold agree totally so that is why i'm saying that when i say like we are working with 200 jewelers i'm not just talking about the you know the top ones the top ones are definitely using but you know we are working in around 40 cities in india there are tier 3 tier 4 cities where probably a flight will not go but you will still find a jeweler using augmented reality so i think that is the power of technology and especially post covid like you know people have accepted that immersive experience is the way to you know sell so i think uh, it is the experience so for example if you are trying something with, uh, in in ar on on your laptop or on your mobile and if things are like you know moving around flying etc people will drop it so i think another very important thing is to understand like a good quality of ar vr or a mixed uh, mixed you know experience etc so i think 3d design or 2d design i think how clear so even in 2d i feel if a picture is beautifully shot it can look as real so i i mean uh, i would definitely like to discuss more with samit on you know uh, how we can use 3d uh, without increasing probably the size and making it more accessible for people but my personal take is that currently it is not something that is very accessible and okay. it is something that requires a lot of uh, tech technology i know so mohit as far as you are concerned you are one of the biggest retailers in the country in the physical world all of that probably you're going to translate the experiences online with all the brands that you have right from armani representation to uh, tons of them i don't even remember probably that will also come on to geo mart or it could be a separate so you know you're going to be dealing with the masses the the middle and the top end so you'd have to have varying experience for all of them varying 
uh, ways of delivering the uh, uh, you know and a wow experience. Yeah, so uh, you're right, actually. So you know, we we deal with the masses uh, on the essential side. We also have on the on the top end, right? Uh, the Reliance brands, uh, you know, the, Mo- the Mojis, the Steve Madden's, and Gas, and uh, even Marks and Spencers. They're all Reliance ventures, actually. Uh, so we've uh, uh, so we have we see experience on both the sides, but uh, I think uh, yeah. So it's a different experience across different segments. It's a very mall Monday experience at at uh, when we're dealing with the you know the, the bottom of the pyramid because that's the way people shop, right? Uh, discounts, sales, genies, uh, chaos, right? And that that Monday feel because uh, but when you go right at the top, actually, what what I, what Samit is saying is very interesting. These are the small things like the lighting for a jewelry or a or, or a product to be bought uh, can be so important because at the end of the day, uh, it's a game of seduction. And uh, and it's 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 an art actually. It's not uh, uh, so even a, you know you so, you know to basically the sale actually gets converted when you talk to the heart and uh, there's a mind and a heart combination etc. So I think uh, so sometimes we get you know when we get so much involved into tech and we try to create things which are only talking to the mind. I I think uh, that's really not the right way. Uh, it doesn't really convert into sales, but. Uh, but yeah, so I so it's different for different segments. I, I like the example of uh, simple example of the right lighting to sell that product. You know, s- simple things uh, which can make a lot of difference versus some of those uh, very tech, uh, uh, you know, experience around uh, you know uh, in virtual realities and in, in AR etc. So, so like that. Great. So, I mean, I've been, I, I'm, I'm an Armani wearer, Armani jeans, especially. I think that's part of your stable. Yeah. Whenever I go into Prada Clean, I can't make sense of the of the models, etc. Yeah. Uh, you know, the different design, the different versions they have, J21, J19. Uh, yeah. for, as a shopper, I do not buy Armani online. I buy it from the physical store. Unless the experience changes for me, gets as real as I can, unless I get to see how it looks on my body, I won't buy it. So those are things which you'll have to bring in for the top-end spot, so shopper. Going forward, yeah. 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 Going forward, but, but, a, but a but a beautiful shot of the Damani jeans, uh, you know, with uh, the right influencer and the right recommendation, a mix of these uh, two three things uh, can actually sell you that Armani. Versus, you have a virtual trial room where you are trying and seeing yourself in that. It is really the you know whoever whoever the selling is an art actually. So whoever can you know do that uh, you know can find a way to talk to the heart. Uh, so there would be somebody who would sell our money to you online as well, if done. Well. Not really, not really, not me. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I have close to twenty of them. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a very rigorous shop of our money chain. So I, I know my Armanis, and I do want to try them how they look. Otherwise, I won't buy them because I don't know how they fit me. So Pratik, what about you? You have a similar challenge because your your products are, you know, they, there's a lot of photorealism. You know, before I buy it, I'm going to get damn well married. I'm going to have engagement. I'm going to have function. There's, you have to have the action. So the right, yeah, look, I, the right look. Yeah, sure. So I think uh, the 3D view is uh, something which uh, definitely need to be actually uh, be uh, tested out on which we are already working on it. And uh, I just wanted to go back on the point of uh, the, the usage of uh, the online as an error, right? For all the brands which we do have it in India. I think uh, Pawan and Mohit and all will also going to agree on that. Uh, because uh, if you're talking about the uh, online people are going offline and the offline brands are going online, right? So that is, yeah. a, that is a cycle which is happening right now. And uh, all the offline brands are like going to decide, like after maybe possibly whenever we're going to decide right now, we do have a 500 stores. But let's take example, once you are going to reach it out at a level of 1000 stores, we will also say that, okay, let's not open, keep on opening new stores. We need to actually start working towards, or in another two two hundred stores adding up, right? We need to start working towards the experience stores, right? Then only the then the, then only the users are not actually intention like they they whenever they are going to enter in any of the store, they are not their intention is not only to buy, right? Their intention is to actually how this product will going to look at on on my body on my is that product is actually going. Uh, in the same base of what uh, my my brand is stands for, like or because the ticket size is very high, like we are not selling a 
to go with some other word and all, but we are not selling like a T-shirt worth uh, worth value of four ninety nine, right? My Shivani worth value of five fifty thousand rupees or a one lakh rupees. Being a brand like Manivar, it makes sense for us in future to actually open even the experience stores, right? So the offline brand is doing something into the offline world to just give a feeling to the customer so that they can experience into the same manner. And then the uh, the same the execution of that sale will going to be happen on online, right? Just like what Mohit was telling uh, uh, about buying a cycle, right? He has experienced uh, the thing into the offline world, but he had ended up buying it online from their app or whatever the in-house app and all, right? So I think uh, it is the same thing. If I'm talking about the VR, right? I just want to relate this VR thing to the two things, right? Uh, almost ten years back, like we can say, like the people were only or the brands were only uploading the products on their website. to just show whatever they produce they were their intention was not to actually getting a sale from that point of view till now now the e-commerce and the brands have a very aggressive put, like i can say a contribution from e-commerce has to increase it to the 10% or even a 20% or the 30% of their level right the, from the top line and that 20% and 30% is not in a 10 crores number tens of crores or hundreds of crores so from that level till now we have actually seen the growth of e-commerce in india the virtual reality even omni right which pawan was also agreeing on that right omni we were actually discussing since long time now and, and like by the way like omni is as a concept can be a new but the as a modules is already been present in all the offline brand which you do have it right because if it is a offline to offline right one store uh, is going to actually provide one uh, product to the other store that was also be the part of the omni now we are just going to figure it out okay how the tech is going to enable so the online customer will going to buy uh, one product and it get delivered in within a fraction of 2 hours or 3 hours right so that is something which is going to drive a lot of thing uh it is the same thing which is going to happen with virtual reality i'm telling right this is something as a wow factor can brand can actually keep introducing to the user by saying okay we do have this and that where hardly 2% or 5% of the users are actually experiencing it but you actually don't know when this 5% can suddenly become over the period of time it will take its own time maybe possible covid has actually pushed this 2% level to a 5% 10% right now but over the period of one year two years or three years this once this thing will going to be a start approaching 40% or even a 60% right then agency who is actually providing this tender solution they will definitely going to actually looking for a new new guy to So this is going to take its own team. Uh, that's what I'm actually trying to say. And in but in the meanwhile, three D will be useful. Three D, three until and unless you are not actually selling a Colgate, right? Which you rightly mentioned, right? Colgate may you actually don't want to actually see the Colgate in some other way. You know, like how what is the product it stands for. You don't need to actually see the photo even. Yeah. You can actually call the like a uh, one guy and then he can actually deliver it. But for the jewelry, but for the Sherwani, but even for the Armani's, right? you have to actually start keep on improving your uh, your deliverables right how you are actually communicating with your uh, customers how what are the thing which you are actually offering to your customer that is something which is very important it is a keep on happening thing i'm telling you like in next after 6 months once we are going to sit together again there will be one new thing which is going to be come into the market right and we are going to talk about that thing okay every brand has to actually adapt this thing so it is a keep on happening thing we were not actually talking about power right uh, we were not talking about uh, concluding on the part of the omni now we are saying last two months or three months we have to do this thing whatever like a 50 models are there at least test it out with two or three models right so these are these things usually come into the picture once the actually the urgency comes otherwise these concepts are always been there into the market since last two years five years or 10 years i understand so i was talking about voice activated search you know of products voice voice activated buying Uh, is that something that's going to be a phenomena in India, Surendra? And uh, uh, are, are you all seeing any demand for that? Uh, well, there is there is a demand for that. Although I, I think you know it will it will only pick up as we as we move ahead in time. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't want to type. I want to say I I, I want a Colgate. I want a I want a, a soap, a, a Lux soap. I just want to uh, you know talk into my phone and get the order done. Yes. So you'll have to have voice recognition, different accents, all that will happen. and that is yes, something sir. that geo future and all the other players will have to be ready for going forward yes so and, and I'll, I'll i'll take that so voice is uh, as i say voice is the future and uh, but again uh, actually you know if you if you see how the voice uh, really picked up in china 
the fact was because uh, uh, you know Chinese to English and English to Chinese uh, is a bit of you know issue they have, and uh, in in India also you will see at the, at the at the lower end you know vernacular speaking people uh, non English are going to be the first adopters. So your rural your uh, your basic phone phone users etc. They are going to be and they will adopt voice like anything actually because uh, uh, because that's where it makes sense actually so it's not going to start from the top it's going to start really from the bottom the, you know the whole voice thing uh, the whole voice search thing and the voice yeah. buying also so we see all that happening samit in terms of uh, how do you integrate voice with what you all offer how do you see that happening so uh, see we we primarily are into the 3d space so we generally do not cater to the voice artificial intelligence thing but yeah definitely when it comes to you know have an integration between voice to 3d and all that stuff um, as pratik also mentioned these things were there for long but now we were pushed into it like you know we were just waiting in the boundaries and just maybe enjoying the match or something like that but now we are we are pushed into so that we start playing it and we start implementing it so voice with 3d everything was like you know waiting for us to you know for us to you know accept it or adapt it so yeah i mean like there are there are a lot of things which which will change and uh, anil if you remember something which i mentioned in the last webinar also think these kind of things would have i think us two years but now i think we all have you know tried and implemented it in two months or three months of time uh, because we were all com- in a comfort zone business was happening people used to visit shops and all that has changed now and just for the because that the 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 online business is growing and we we want to we want our users to have the the actual experience like immersive experience or whatever whatever best possible technology will also play a big role and um, uh, i think uh, not just younger generation i've seen even slightly senior citizens have also become pro online shopping and they was my dad this. my dad passed away in uh, february but even a month before he passed away he was shopping for medicines online he was ordering it on his app on pharmacy and whatever that was uh and so so you know he was 87 yep. and not that i made him literate he made himself literate Correct. and very savvy on on technology yeah i'll just add to the voice part that you mentioned anil so it's 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 really interesting to see you know uh, how it can be very useful in certain scenarios like you know we were talking about e-commerce and then we built a platform for nursery e-commerce you know nurseries you know people who sell plants uh and uh, you know the the assisted discovery that we talked about sometimes you know there are certain great use cases that can be addressed very effectively with voice search like you know uh, i imagine you know if i have uh, you know 1000 1000 uh, different samples in front of me and i know very specifically what i want like you know i want a uh, a specific plant you know 10 inches uh you know with a uh, with a fixed uh, uh you know container size i can just say that you know i can just put that and then those facets you know imagine an app that captures those facets and you know brings out you know the exactly relevant uh, items you know maybe 10 out of those 1000 you know it's a great time saver uh, you don't even have to type anything just just open the app say what you want and then boom you know, it brings you you know the exact results Yeah, I get that. I it get that. Works very well in certain cases. Yeah, so 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 let's move on. Any last words from any all of you? We've already extended our time. Any last uh, words? I just want to, uh, if I can ask, I just want to look uh, maybe interest of everyone. I want to ask a question from Meghna. So Meghna, uh, you know the in the whole e-commerce space, and there are 150 million SKUs, right? And as we we handle this fragmentation, in your world, you said about 200,000 plus SKUs. How uh, is that? That's I think that's a number you used to state it. Yeah, like I said, yeah, like so. Uh, how does it uh, you know you know uh, how does it work and once the price band is decided you know and and what kind of at what scale we are in the jewelry e-commerce sale and generally inquisitive i know we have reliance jewels so we started doing home deliveries we actually were more than 2 lakh we send a you know guard also for the delivery etc so i but but it's, it's it's we have to still learn a lot but but just to understand how you manage fragmentation and uh, an actual convert into a sale is there anything you want to add if that's of so, interest yeah so yeah firstly very happy to be you know i'm already talking to reliance jewels team uh, yeah. and uh, looking forward to you know just seeing how we can yeah. transform it at lens too 
but currently what we are doing and how we are doing is that uh, so you know these sqs come differently from different jewelers like you know some probably will have just 200 and some will have 20000 uh, so we host it on a cloud and uh, uh, you know when it is on an e-commerce so when an ar is is implemented on an asq on e- e-commerce we just ensure that the size is really small so without losing the quality of the image because that is when irrespective of whether it's a 10000 sqs or a 1000 sqs uh, without losing the quality you can have like a very seamless experience so is that like I, have i been able to answer your question no, no, I, i was just trying to understand uh, uh, because you know some of the other products you 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 more or less know what you're looking for but when it really comes to jewelry it's you know you decided to buy a jewelry but the design has to be selected and when you yes. ask me as to use you know how simple but i think i'll take it offline so basically no so i'll just add one more thing to that so one thing that really makes uh, this very easy is the filtration so if for example i exactly know what's the price that i'm looking for whether yes. i'm looking for a diamond or or a gold whether i'm looking for like a a, a ruby or a or an emerald so if i can just feed those things i only get access to the things that i am looking for and that is when it becomes very easy and convenient for me to just go and purchase it at least go and browse it yeah i'll just add to uh, it a little bit more you know so that that's where the 3d part comes into play i think you know it's it's very important to uh, so if you have cad images you know and and images rendered in 3d uh, you know then the number of sqs is is uh, hardly an issue and uh, yeah. in fact we, we did a trial with reliance you know uh, uh, For, for the reliance jewelry you know uh, and at that time uh, you know we we had we had we, we we actually talked about 3d and and uh, you know that's where you know uh, the point that summit made you know uh, the images sure. uh, you can get them in any sizes and you know they can be of real good quality so you may not even have you know pieces which are ready uh, on on your stock but you just have designs and then you know push them for made to order type of uh, scenarios great Yeah. So, so, so last words. I mean, there's one more thing. Jewelry you can never get. You know, whether it's an IF, what's the color, what's the cut, what's the carat. Exactly. So that's something which is, I mean, the four C's which are very very crucial: clarity, cut, carat, and the fourth one, mega. Mega, are you there? Are you will have we lost you? No, no, no. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's something else. So, any last words from any of you all? Right from. Mohit, you mentioned. Was that your last word, or would you like to add anything else about about the experience going forward? What do we see ha- developing? How do we see it evolving? How do we see? How do we see it? For in your case, you're looking at more massy. You're looking at classy. You're looking at. So you'll be dealing with the full Monty, uh, you know, in, in the in your in your shopping world for the consumer. So I think yeah, big problems first. So India B, uh, you know, what e-commerce experience can be delivered? I think that's what. all our this ecosystem needs to work on but uh, yes voice search uh, simple grassroots tech social commerce you know in, inclusion of uh, smes i think uh, uh, you know omni would probably another word uh, clearly and uh, i think those those are those are the few things uh, you know that sets to and so yeah but uh, big problem first i would say sure samit Oh, I, my, uh, my last words would be, you know, I'll be more than happy to work with, you know, all these biggies uh, in case of, in terms of, you know, any help would uh, you guys would need in terms of technology front. Uh, we deal with a lot of, um, uh, you know, anth- entrepreneurs who have tested a lot of things and, uh, you know, try to implement more user friendly, in, uh, you know, experiences in terms of technology. Our tools are, uh, you know. Uh, one of the best which has been you know for years been used for animation visual effects and now been um, the extensively used in the e-commerce business so yep i'll um, you know any help needed uh, from my side i'll be more than happy to work with you know all of uh, you guys yeah so i'm i'm just you know just question came to me on whatsapp saying that you know this pandemic make this lockdown and semi lockdown semi opening up may continue for a longer time maybe till next august unless the vaccine is found early and we find a way of of being safe from the virus and secure so what happens on from now until then you'll have to continuously people will get tired of the experience that wa- they have they want more innovation so what are the innovations we can see from here till maybe next august let's look at look like look at that as a time frame pratik i think uh, right now we are talking about the virtual reality and all right and uh, if uh, 
if the brand is actually offering something, I'm not only talking about the mother brand. All the brands are actually doing a pretty good job, right? Into, into their own ways, right? Because they know their customers, their requirements and all. I think this requirement and the things are going to actually change in next uh, each and every two months or three months down the line where certain things are going to be actually keep on going or it will going to be keep continue for the longer respect. Uh, and some new things are going to actually come into the picture because right now, if you're talking about uh, the voice search, right? Uh, you can actually, like if your system, like I do have Alexa at my home, right? If the Alexa is start telling me that, okay, it's been like a one month now, you have to actually, again, I'm giving the same example. Now, maybe possibly you have to again order the pull gate. Then I just need to, being a customer, I just need to say yes. That's it. But this particular piece is uh, not actually related to all the categories, right? So the brands or the category needs to actually figure it out how they uh, are going to even uh, first uh, be relevant to that particular new technology or not, because the requirement can be really different. Uh, if uh, one sunny day, the Alexa will going to start calling me by saying, hey, Pratik, I think that is a time for you to actually buy a Sherwani. I can't say yes, because my, I'm going to my Maybe because my wife is already there, right? <laughs> so, so it depends on the, that was on the lighter note, but yeah. So that depends on the category, right? Because whatever is actually coming into the market, right? You have to just keep on uh, figuring it out whether it actually, it is actually relevant to your customer or not. And uh, I'm telling you like the, the way ahead is actually going to uh, very different, right? Because first of all, the season is coming. Right, so we are very hopeful. All the brands and uh, like uh, it applies on us also, like for offline and online, we are very hopeful. Uh, season is coming, and we'll be uh, definitely going to see a very good numbers uh, in this coming uh, financial year for sure. Whatever happened in the in past, like it is a past. Uh, let's looking forward for uh, getting a, a very good uh, a season ahead. Apart from that, uh, I can say like uh, uh, like all the brands slowly and steadily, like they will start adapting it. All the people usually follow the their uh, mentors and all like into in in the terms of their professional life as well as into their business life also. So if the five brands into the market will going to adapt something, another fifty will going to come into the nine and followed by five thousand. Right. So that is the normal scenario. I can say. Yeah. So Pawan, I'm also going to ask you with you know your 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 final words and also talk to you about subscription based uh, services. The Dollar Shave Club is what I was yeah. talking about in the US. So yeah. are those things? Likely to come in in your last words about the user experience, photorealism, uh, yeah. you know, and everything else that, that we talked about earlier. Yeah. So uh, there are two things which I want to say is that I, I think uh, customers always teach us a lot. If you look at the entire pandemic period and still going on, I think there's a big shift which has happened in terms of also connecting with people with one another, right? I mean, I think video calling has become such a big part, like a Zoom has become such a big part, right? Uh, so I think uh, while I think uh, there, there could be a discussion around how the customers are going to kind of accept some of these virtual shopping, but I think they are using it on a personal level to connect or, uh, or make their emotional bonding far more stronger, right? So it's just about brands kind of delivering that experience. I don't think it's all, it's any more about, you know, as, as people start to use it at a personal level, the acceptance of anything becomes far, far higher. That's that's one big change, which I see it. And I think it's all about businesses. How do they capture it? And what do they do about it? I think, uh, you know, that's, that's one point uh, which I want to make. Subscription model and so on. I think they just sound, uh, you know, pretty obvious. We have done it for our small format businesses. We do have subscription model, which is in terms of milk and bread and so on and so forth. But yeah, I think that should just be increasing, right? Because as you, if you are able to predict your customer's uh, consumption pattern, it just becomes easier to ensure that you you ensure that you know the stickiness with your audience is always there, so that you don't lose that customer to anyone else. Of course, I think these are again uh, next four or five months will be very interesting for each one of us to see. And yeah, I mean that, that's that's my thought. Yeah, Meg Megna. Uh, and yes, I was. Hi. No, in your category, the subscription model can work very, very well in your category. Yeah. Speaking yeah, for the low-end products. Uh, yeah, that is true. Uh, and I think people are adapting to it. So another thing which uh, Pratik mentioned, which I think, you know, big retail stores are adapting is, is endless time. So, you know, that's also a very interesting way, I guess, uh, you know, where uh, you don't need things, but still you get access to it. 
so yeah i mean you know with the combination of subscription and the style all of it together i think it's going to be a great experience one more thing that that you mentioned about video calling is something that we are looking to integrate with ars so just imagine if all of us right now are in a video calling and we are also shopping together i think that is going to be a great experience so when you are talking about what from here to next uh, uh, august i mean i look at these things as uh, next level innovations that is going to enhance the shopping so on a video call you have ar ex- an ar experience building you put your hand yes. out to the camera and you get to know if you have something megna if you have something in this uh, same point please uh, do contact <laughs> uh sure, sure definitely okay i'm really sorry but i'll have to I'll thank have you to very much and, and, and last point so from surendra last point from surendra anything else to say or do we call it a wrap well uh the the uh, I, i'll first address the video calling part you know i, I think what what she told we already have and you know some of our customers are already using that technology you know the integration of video uh you know video assisted uh, or or you know uh, video call coupled with ar that's that's more specific to jewelry but it can be extended to other areas as well we already have it and you know some of our customers are already using it but coming back to the point you made i think you know from now till maybe another year uh, it's all going to be you know that uh, adoption of digital uh, is is something that uh, that is going to be inevitable uh, there are more and more angles that that keep coming in there are more and more uh, perspectives like the video calls like uh, Uh, you know booking appointments simple stuff but you know all integrated uh, in, uh, in in a single offering from a business you know that helps them stay connected with their customers even in this uh, you know uh, unique times that that's that that's really what will drive it because so after all industry 4.0 that's a big talk nowadays you know it's it's all about you know uh, how digital is your business because technology can do only so much i mean you have you have ar vr you talk about uh, machine learning you know Uh, they are all great in their own space but unless and until you have a vision and uh, an integrated approach on leveraging these technologies uh, ultimately you know uh, businesses will not be able to give the experience that the, uh, their consumers are looking for so uh, it all has to come together end of the day yeah there's lots more conversations we can have headless uh, uh, e-commerce that's another thing that's coming up but we won't talk about that right now we've spoken a hell of a lot uh, thank you to autodesk thank you to each of the panelists for being a part of this fantastic uh, uh, webinar i've learned a lot i hope you guys have learned from each other by sharing Absolutely. and uh, you know basically at the center of everything is the customer we've got to keep him on top uh, you know over there he's god he's goddess he's everything to us so yeah. thank you again have a great day until we meet again next time this is anil vanwari from animation express thanks, goodbye thank you thank you thanks everyone thanks everyone bye everyone bye bye